Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's so good to see you and the, the spaces between us um, are like the spaces in the poem, right? <laughs> Poetry is that stuff that one of my students once said, told me when I asked him to describe poetry, he says, oh, it's that stuff in books that doesn't quite reach the margins. <laughs> so in COVID time, we're distanced and, and we have spaces and it, you look like a poem. So I'm Carol Martignaco and I am very happily launching this book, A Bowl of Orange Suns. And I'll read to you a few poems from the book, and then I have a few introductions to make. Um, I hope you're all right with this being recorded, um, because we, we will upload it to uh, YouTube, and it'll be available for others who couldn't be here. Quite a few that, 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 that weren't able to make it. So I, I think... Whenever I tell people what the title of the book is, they always say, well, what does that mean? Where does that come from? So I'll read the, the uh, title poem in the book. The book is so new that, you know, I don't even, I, I don't have the page numbers memorized. <laughs> okay, so here's a bowl of orange suns. For grandson Asher at 15 months. Son, he proclaims from his perch on my lap and jabs a stubby brown index finger insistently. Son, 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 he chants. But I am deep in conversation with his mother and fail to respond. Son, up close, he shoves it cool against my cheek, barely able to balance its weight in his palm. Then I recall how yesterday, as I pushed his stroller round the lake path in early evening, he pointed to that orange ball hanging low among the trees, and I had named it for him. Son, he tries again, shoving it firmly into my hand. Son, yes, I agree. This one's an orange son. We make up a song to sing its name. Years from now, we may be sitting at this same round wooden table discussing metaphor. Today, we play catch the sun, juggle, and nearly drop before returning the bright globe to the blue bowl in the center to rest among a whole pile of other suns, those spheres of light we feast upon. And so... I want to say the beautiful image on the front of the book uh, is uh, an original watercolor from Dennis Palmer, who, when I sent him that, that poem, this is what he, he gave us back. Thank you, Dennis. I wish you could be here. Um, this group of poet, poems, there's 75 poems, one for each year I've been on the planet, and it's, uh, it's been important for me to get this work out because I've always been a writer. I think, uh, you know, it, it's somewhere in the book I say that I started uh, my love of language uh, making up songs and stories in the backyard swing at a very early age, and they couldn't shut me up, right? <laughs> I just went on and on. I'd, I'd, be, I'd start... Uh, um, extrapolating uh, and expounding and I would just keep, keep on and um, the story from my parents is that I was late talking they were worried about me they thought what's wrong you know she should be she should be saying words you know and then maybe phrases and, and they thought well she's not delayed in any other way one day, my mother opened the door to the bedroom and I was in my crib singing songs. Who knew, right? And so we never, we never quite know. But it began that early. So here's a, a, an early memory. It's the first poem in the book. And it's called Adeline, for the shadow. 
<coughs> Abalone. Begins in a barefoot dance, out the door the summer I was five. Soles of the feet awakened by cold early morning dew. Flattening tracks in the iridescent grass all the way to the garden. To check on the purple and yellow iris, I'd waited for days to unfold. Stepping into the slippery soil, I stubbed my toe on the shell, bent down to scoop it up where it lay among shiny stones, and all the night's rain pooled in the watery curve, spilled through a neat line of holes along the outer arc. A stream of water washing my feet caught violet, grass green, white blue, a clouded sky, Yet inside the shell, in wavy lines, all the colors of rain remained. And I thought, how perfect a world this is to live in. How perfect a world. And coming here, I'm sure you had that sense. What a beautiful world to be alive in this season of color. Hmm? Well... I could, I could tell you that my love for oranges wasn't, wasn't uh, always so passionate. I, um, I grew up in, in a very small, uh, crowded household. We were poor, but we didn't know that. You know, we didn't think we were poor. Um, we were rich in all kinds of good things. But um, this poem talks about the kind of the shadow side of my uh, romance with orange. It's called Color Coded, and it's a bit about my uh, family of origin. (coughs) My elder brother was blue. The closest sister after me had rose. The fourth, a boy, was given green. Yet another brother, yellow. And the next sister got lavender. The seventh and youngest so far down the line, she got to choose anything the older ones outgrew. Later in art class, it would make perfect sense I'd end up orange. Blue being first is my mother's favorite. We were each assigned as we arrived, in a pattern of direct opposites around the color wheel, spanning the spectrum, though as siblings go, not always complementary. I imagine her paging one day through the thick Sears Roebuck catalog, coming upon the ad for a whole set of steel tumblers in rainbow colors. A sturdy six would be enough to carry us all past the spill at every meal stage, easier to set the table and keep in check the daily sharing of germs. It must have been overwhelming in that tiny country house each birth crowding us all further into the corners, for then she went the whole route, matching metal bowls, melamine plates, towels and washcloths, coverlets for the beds, toothbrushes and personal items unthinkable to share. Towels and even metal cups and bowls faded over time, yet I recall how from early on I felt locked in and color-coded, wait wishing to be anything but washed-out orange. Till I discovered Matisse and the outrageous Fauvists, Rothko's bold color field paintings, and read what orange had to say to all the other colors, by which time I'd learned to embrace with passion the very thing I'd hated from the start. So life is some kind of like that, isn't it? You know, uh, we, we, we learn to, to make our peace with certain things. And that definitely is true of the color orange. I was folding clothes when the unthinkable truth we somehow already knew was spoken. All at once, my arms unable to move, grew heavy with the weight of holding my own children. My eldest hears the news and calls, 
we mourn together. She who is childless would have loved any one of them as her own. How do we carry these missing thousands close to heart? Two, after seeing the class photographs, dark heads with shorn black hair looking up from rows of wooden desks, their gaunt faces haunt me. In my sleep, I am their teacher, but as I stand before them, their eyes hold no more fear. They are already looking through me. Three, outside on the church lawn for the Canada Day Memorial, I place on the folding table altar near small sheepskin slip-ons, beaded ballet slippers, and red rain boots, a pair of yellow sneakers with white laces. Beside me, a young expectant mother bounces a squirming toddler on her hip as she adds an infant's blue moccasins. We nod and join the queue to be smudged and blessed before entering to find our seats in alternating rows among a sea of orange shirts. Baskets of bright ribbons are passed. We rise to sing, O Canada, our home and native land. I lose my voice on the first stanza and cannot find it to sing the closing anthem, Jesus Loves Me. Four. Give the numbers names, I pray these bones, rising now out of the lap of earth, will live again if only in our awareness. Before ever we think of begging forgiveness, restoring honor to these lost children with clean air, land, and water to all, all their relations. Five. At night I run, waving after them, through woods, over frozen snow, wading streams and tall grasses, across open farm fields. I keep calling, wait, come back, forgive us, we are better now. We know we were horribly wrong. If I could tell, if I could, I would tell you, you are beautiful, each of you wanted, loved from time's beginning each a never-to-be-repeated miracle of being. Our world will forever be impoverished, not knowing the gift of who you were or might have been. You are the very ones we needed to find. Mm.